Liga Qytetare e Shqiptare Amerikane dhe aktiviteti saj lobbyist në librin e Faton Bislimit për pjeket për lirin Shqiptare dhe fundin e Jugoslavis, u promovua në New Jersey. Mori pies dhe përshëndeti aktivitetin e përurimit të librit, kryetari Komitetit për pun të jashtme të Senatit të Shteteve dhe Bashkuara, Bob Menendez, senator demokrati i New Jersey, si dhe diplomat të dy vendeve tona, ambasadori Kosovës në Washington, Ilir Dugoli, shefi misionit përheshëm të Shqipëris në OKB, ambasador Ferit Hoxha, konsulli i përgjishmi Kosovës në shtetet bashkuara, ambasador Frimzimi Sufaj, si dhe historiani njërë Yusuf Bujovi me mikun e ti Milaim Abdullahu. Senatori Bob Menendez, Kretari Komitetit për pun të jashtme i Senatit të Shteteve të Bashkuara në fjallën e ti vlerësoj me fjallët më të mira punën e faton bislimit dhe librin, si dhe rritheksoj për kushtimin e ti dhe të Shteteve të Bashkuara për përkrajet të pa rezerv ndaj Kosovës dhe kauze son komtare, falë angazhimit dhe bashkëpunimit të sinqert me Ligën Qytetare Shqiptaro-Amerikane. Nga promovimi, senatori Mendes u këthuje direkt e në Washington DC për takime me presidentin Biden në shtepin e bardhë për qërshtjen e Ukrajinës. Gjatë fjallës mbajtur në këteve primtari, senatori Bob Menendez i ardhur enkas për promovimin e librit të autorit Faton Bislimi, The Quest for Albanian Freedom and the End of Yugoslavia, theksoj kontributin e qëmushëm që dha ish kongresmeni Dioguardi. Në ndërko, a i duke e përgjigjur interesimit të Agim Aliçkajt mbi qëndrimin e Washingtonit lidur me qërshtjen e Kosovës, me Mendez, Premtoj i bindur se edhe Senati edhe Kongresi e mbështesin fuqishëm qëndrimin e politikës e shteteve të bashkura në përkrajet të Kosovës dhe të Shqiptarve në përgjësi, duke mos pas asë edhe më të voglë ndryshim në këtë mbështetje dhe përkraje edhe në qofë se do të ketë në një konflikt Ruso-Ukrajinas. Aktiviteti ishte në nërgazimin e Ligës Qytetare Shqiptaro-Amerikane dhe umbajt në restorantin Prime Steak and Seafood në New Jersey. Në këta aktivitet morën pjesë dhjetarë dhe primtarë, ma dje e edhe disa që këshin uhtuar largë nga Illinois, Michigani, Atalanta, Washingtoni, erdhen për të promovuar librin e autorit Faton Bislimit me titull për pjekja për lirin shqiptare dhe fundi i Jugoslavis. Kongresisti Gjozef Diogardi dhe Liga Qytetare Shqiptaro-Amerikane 1985-1993. Mi dystyre ishte dhe kryetari i degës se lidhjes qytetare shqiptaro-amerikane nga Michigani verbimtari i njohur Marash në Cullaj, i ardhur posaqerisht për këtë event. Këta aktivitet e moderoj Shirley Clois Dioguardi, këshiltare e qeshtive balkanike, ndërsa ajo prezentoj folësit kryesor, që ishin antarin e kongresit të shtetëve të bashkuara, Gjozef Dioguardi, kryetari Ligës Qytetare Shqiptaro-Amerikane, Agima Lichkaj dhe Faik Lita, antar të bordit e ekzekutiv të Ligës Qytetare Shqiptaro-Amerikane, si dhe shefin e misionit të përheshëm të Shqipris në organizatën e kombëve të bashkuara, ambasador Ferit Hoxha, përse cilin për i tyre, ajo lezoj nga një biografi të shkurëtër. Libri u thas është bazuar në dokumente originale dhe materiale arkivore të Washingtonit dhe është të botuar vetëm në anglisht, këtu në shtetet e bashkuarat Amerikës. Ndërsa fakton historinë e vërtet të maradhenjeve unike shqiptaro-amerikane, për mes dokumenteve të publikura më parë, Libri të regon pashtu historinë e angazhimit të shtetetve të bashkuara për qëllirimin dhe pavarësimin e Kosovës, demokratizimin e Shqipëris dhe angazhimin për të drejtat njërzore të shqiptarve në Makedoni, Maltëzi e Luginën e Prëshevës. Vëzuar në dokumente originale dhe materiali arkivore të shëbëave, Libri për pjekja për lirin shqiptare dhe fundi u stavis Kongresisti Gjosef Geogaldi dhe Liga Qytetare Shqiptare-Amerikane 1985-1993 ga doktor Fatum Bisimi botuar në anglisht në shëbëa fakton historinë në vërtit të mardhenjeve unike shqiptare-Amerikane. Për mes dokumenteve të pa publikuara në par, Libri të regon historinë e angazhimit të shëbëave për shqirinë dhe pavarësimin e Kosovës të 
demokratizimin e Shqipëris dhe angazhimin për të drejta qytetare e njërzore të shqiptarve në Macedoni, Matlezi e Rugin të Preshebe. Si është gatë në dhëllimi i parë për kësaj historie, si që përshkruar në epilog Shrelli Krojës Diogardi, shqiptare për shqipët e Balkanit e cila ju bashkua Ligës në minje në qëndrimi të vetë kate. Qush në 7.5 qëshorë, minje në qëndrimi të vetë gjashtë në Kongresi në Shqiptarve prezentohet rezolut kongresionale për të drejta shqiptare në Kosovë e sponsorizua nga vetëm një kongresis Gjell Diogarki dhe nga një kujti në Senat, Bob Do. Për një vetë me vonë, rezoluta tjetër për Kosovë në nëshkruat nga Diogarki dhe 58 kongresis të tjerë në përkrajat të ti. Embaniment kërsenimi në këshëndelëve nga prezidenti George P. W. Bush. Rënje të këti mesaj janë letërën personale të njëzit e 7-7-orit në një nëshme të djetë të të dërgua Diogarki. Letërë datës të të shkurë në një nëshme në nëndë të të një e aso kërë senatori Joe Biden të një me presidenti shëgave për Diogarki dhe dëgjimi që ajdo dheqë në senat për qështë në Kosovës të dhënë filimi në nëshërimi të Biden në Kosovën dhe Shqiptarit. Këto e në vetën pak dronësa të fësari të fakte dhe historike që të mbojnë dhe dhe. Welcome everybody. Are you happy? Are you proud to be Albanian? Are you happy you're here in America and proud to be American? Everybody that we know in Washington knows that the biggest supporters of the country are the Albanian people. And that's one of the reasons George W. Bush didn't take too much time to recognize in, uh, in, in 2000 and, uh, what was that, 2008, the independence of Kosovo. But it's still a work in process. You know that, everybody. Yes, we're independent, but many people say we're independent in name only. That's not right. Because right now with the European community, you have four countries that don't respect Kosovo, haven't recognized it, four of the 28, and of the United Nations, and we're not part of the United Nations yet, it's over 100 countries, but there's almost 200 countries, so we have more than half. So we have to work. Shumpu, right? Yes. We're going to do it. We've done it before. We, we were in terrible circumstances, as you know, under the Serbian regime, with the, with the ethnic cleansing. And that's a past chapter. We don't want to go back there, do we? No. So we got to teach Mr. Vucic a lesson that we know he was taught by Milosevic. Milosevic went to the Hague, and unfortunately for him, he died there. We don't want Vucic to remember all the counsel that he got from Milosevic, because the same is going to happen to him. And it's not going to be from us. It's going to be the United States of America that's going to stand up for human rights first for everybody, especially for their friends. And there's no better friends for the United States of America, especially the Congress, who's always been in the front, and the Senate and the House, than the Albanian people. Is that right? Yes! Aren't we happy to see Senator Menendez and Nadine here again? Yes! Great. I'm going to shorten some of my remarks. I had initially intended to have everyone from the board stand up and be recognized, so we will do that later. Um, as you know, you know, Kosovo is free, but it's not totally independent yet. And so the work of the Civic League with the U.S. Congress, who understand what is at stake for the future of Kosovo, it's not yet finished. So, and this is why we're so fortunate that Senator Menendez, who served in the Senate, am I correct, for 25 years, I believe, am I right? The number? Not in the Senate, between the House, House and the Senate, Senate, 30 years. 30 years. Thank you for that correction. He is now chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, as you know, and those of you who attended our previous Albanian American Civic League event with him in September were deeply aware of the depth of his knowledge about the Kosovo Serbia conflict his commitment to its resolution and at a time when we are in a situation where the real threats to democracy and the rise of authoritarianism, this senator is fighting oppression. 
this senator is supporting democracy across the globe. We are very, very grateful. And with that, It's good to welcome you back to New Jersey. It's good to be with you. May I wish you all a healthy, and I say healthy because I just had shoulder surgery less than a month ago, so I understand that's important, but healthy, joyous, and prosperous uh, new year as we begin this year. I want to thank uh, Congressman Diaboardi and uh, Shirley for inviting me back. It was good to be here in September. It's a pleasure to once again be addressing the Albanian Americans Civic League uh, with my uh, wife Nadine. She said uh, we have to head to the train station to catch a train to Washington because I have an important meeting uh, later tonight. Normally I go down on Monday, but I have to go back. We have issues with Russia. Uh, and uh, the Emir of Qatar uh, is in Washington, so uh, we are meeting with him tonight. So anyhow, uh, I'm glad that I was able to make it here and we could arrange the schedule so that I could be with you uh, once again. We were honored to join with you in September where we spoke at length uh, about uh, our commitment uh, to Albanians and to Kosovo. Uh, and... Uh, I wanted to be here, especially today, as we celebrate this incredible milestone that the Congressman and Shirley uh, have been part of, two tireless advocates on behalf of Kosovo and among those working to achieve a Southeast Europe that is at peace, whole, and democratic. And they deserve an incredible recognition for the work that they do. Pleased to be here with the ambassador as well. Thank you very much for honoring us with your presence uh, and with the esteemed members of the board of the Albanian American Civic League and all who have come to celebrate the legacy of your organization. It's vital work on behalf of Kosovar Albanians and Albanian communities across the Balkans. Congratulations to Dr. Bislimi as well for his work. Uh, to illuminate uh, Congressman Diaguardi's and Shirley's historic efforts that spurred Congress to action on behalf of Kosovo and Albania. Congratulations. <laughs> the quest for Albanian freedom and the end of Yugoslavia catalogs a critical period of the Albanian American Civic League's engagement with Congress that paved the way for an independent Kosovo years later. Both Joe and Shirley have a long history of advancing human rights of Kosovo Albanians and supporting the self-determination of Kosovo. As early as 1985 and 1986, Joe pushed for Kosovo to have a platform in the Congressional Human Rights Caucus. I used to belong when I was in the House of Representatives to the Congressional Human Rights Caucus. It is a powerful group of members, then at that time led by Tom, the late Tom Lantos, who was known, his name was synonymous with human rights in the world. In the early 1990s, Joe stood up for speaking out against human rights abuses in Kosovo and forged a bipartisan alliance that included Congressman Lantos, Senator Bob Dole, and then someone named Senator Joe Biden, now the President of the United States, to advocate for democracy. His efforts to hold Slobodan Milosevic uh, to account for war crime were critical for advancing peace and democracy in the Balkans. Meanwhile, Shirley eloquently made the case to the American people during the war as to why Kosovo must be an independent country. Under Joe and Shirley's leadership, the Albanian American Civic League tugged at the American conscience. It pricked the American conscience. It reminded us that democracy and human rights in Kosovo were the unfinished issues of the Balkan conflict. Today, 
Congress continues to work towards a Southeast Europe that is at peace, whole, and democratic, one that includes an independent possible. On January 10th, I presided uh, and I'm glad, glad, glad to announce that we have newly confirmed ambassador. Ambassador Hovenier presented his uh, credentials to President Osmani uh, during his hearing before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, which I chaired. I impressed upon him as the nominee my concern that the United States has tried to take a neutral approach in normalization talks between Kosovo and Serbia, when Serbia is disproportionately responsible for the current lack of talks. I support increased United States engagement in these talks, and I'm pleased that President Biden appointed a incredibly qualified candidate to represent us in Pristina. Both our ambassadors to Pristina and Belgrade were young diplomats at the Rambouillet Conference. The United States now has put some of our best players on the field for the first time in a while. However, we can't rest on our laurels. Congress has to continue the work to ensure the rights of Albanians uh, and particularly in the Presheva Valley. And I have pushed the State Department to increase its engagement on this front, as I said I would when we were here in September. With so much important work to do, I welcome the contributions of the Albanian Americans civically towards advancing peace and democracy in the region. Uh, when the history of Kosovo is written in its future chapters, there is no question in my mind that Joe and Shirley and the Albanian civic league will have gilded pages of that chapter of Kosovo history. Thank you very much. Senator said he would take a few questions before he left. So let's see if we can ask a couple of, let me be the first, okay? We have promised the Albanian people who support us, we need your help, that we would have a hearing to go over the key elements of what it's going to take to see the soul of progress again. We've been on a long road of positive progression, interrupted by the Kosovo Wars, as you know, and other things. So we just wanted to go on record to say that we need your help to kind of promote the message of the Albanian people in Kosovo and in the Balkans for their self-determination again and for their human rights, especially when you have such aggressive adversary. I won't even mention their name, you know who they are. So with that, yeah, I will ask you to just make a couple of comments. And I think you all heard the, the question, which is how soon can we have uh, hearings that in the Senate uh, about Kosovo and its future and how we uh, realize its future of independence and freedom and prosperity uh, in a way that uh, all Kosovars desire and, and deserve. And so, uh, of course, before the Foreign Relations Committee, we deal with the whole world and the world is on fire right now. Uh, of course, we have the immediate challenge of Russia as it amasses 130,000 troops on the borders of Ukraine. And for us as Americans, this is beyond the question of Ukraine itself. What we cannot have is a Munich moment. Those of you who may remember history may remember 1938, when Neville Chamberlain ultimately gave Czechoslovakia to uh, Adolf Hitler in pursuit of peace at any price. And the result of that we saw was that peace was not accomplished, but that in fact, Hitler continued his voracious desire uh, to gain more and more territory in Europe. Putin is very clear about his goals. He laments the demise of the Soviet Union, and he seeks to recreate what he calls Nouvelle Russia, to recreate, to rebuild, those countries that are now separate and independent and bring it back into the Soviet orbit. I say that only because that's taken a lot of time for us. Uh, also, we have the challenge of China, which is probably until Russia's aggression, the single most geostrategic challenge. And we have the challenge of North Korea firing missiles. Uh, and we have the challenge 
uh, of in our own hemisphere of Venezuela, El Salvador, Nicaragua, just to mention a few. So there's a lot on the agenda. But having said that, I have spoken uh, to the chair of the Europe subcommittee. And instead of waiting for a full committee hearing, which is what my desire would be, and, and we still may be able to do that, to have a hearing at the Europe subcommittee level that can begin the dialogue. And I would hope that uh, we would get there sometime uh, in the next two months. Uh, and if we do that, we will begin a dialogue that I think will be incredibly important. Thank you. Thank you for coming to our event. You are uh, very much respected by our community. Uh, thank you for everything that you've been doing, not only on Albanian issue. My question is that President Biden is one of the most knowledgeable people about the conflict in Solva and the Balkans. He appointed very powerful ambassadors, Gabriel uh, Espavar. They are very strong and powerful, but the statements that we are getting are still very unclear about where they stand over the policy. It, it, it appears that they are going along with the European policy, which is appeasement, infin, infinite appeasement of Serbia, indefinite appeasement of Serbia. What can we do to stop this and to our representatives to see them take a lead, not follow the Europe. They could take a lead to, to resolve the conflict because the conflict will not be resolved, resolved by a peace in Serbia. Question in essence was, we have good ambassadors, great, but the messaging that we're getting is not as strong, not as clear and as decisive as we would like as it relates to Kosovo. What can we do to change that reality? And so I think that the hearing that I just talked about always rivets the attention of the State Department in terms of what is it that Congress is seeking and what is it that we get the administration to focus on. As I just described the world, part of the challenge, and you know, we think about this administration being in like if it was in for years, it just culminated its first year in office. It did, has been dealing with a once in a lifetime pandemic, uh, so we had nobody vaccinated. Now we have 200 million people vaccinated. Uh, it was dealing with the challenges of the pandemic that ultimately led uh, to enormous economic consequences. So we passed the American Rescue Plan to rescue businesses, restaurants, people, help families. Uh, we passed an infrastructure bill when we, in fact, have uh, the worst infrastructure that we've had since Eisenhower and the interstate highway system. I say that only to say it has not had its attention focused in a way that we would like it to see, particularly in global matters. So now is an opportunity to rivet the administration's attentions as we deal with Russia, which is its most immediate thing, I have to be honest, but by the same token, take the opportunity to say that there are other challenges in Europe that need to be dealt with so that peace and stability can not only happen, hopefully, in Eastern Europe, but can happen in the Balkans as well. And so I think the hearing that the congressman asked about is going to be the gateway towards getting that focus. And we are committed to making that happen. I'm sorry that I'm going to have to leave, but thank you all very thank much. You. Thank you very much. The last time Senator Menendez came, you know, when you're trying to get a, please, please, a good group together, you need an anchor. You need people to see if they can get at least 20, 30, 40 people, then another group comes in, and then you start getting one by one the rest. And that's why we were so successful before, and he did it again. He had 60 people listed to come. Now, some of them had to, because of the weather, had to back out. Yeah. Now, the other thing you have to know is that one of his uncles passed away, and you know the traditions of the Albanian families. What makes Albanians different is they are wedded to their traditions, to their families. And that's important. 
and trying to show that again today. Now, in about a half hour, a group is going to leave, maybe 20, maybe 30 people because the elder that passed away is going to be buried, I guess, there's a lean on but there's a way to it. But in any case, I'm going to introduce now, if I eat, Joey and I really appreciate all the things he done, and it's, it's hard to single out anybody, but I can assure you that today was difficult because of the weather, because of the fact that we had some limited time with the, the senator. So without further ado, I'm going to have Faik now say a few words. Senator Faik. <laughs> <laughs> As, uh, as Joe said, my name is Faik Lita, and I've been a member of this league since 1992. We came for this book, and thank you very much, Dr. Bismimi, for writing this wonderful book. I, I finished reading it yesterday, and uh, I wrote some comments today about that. It is really a wonderful book, and I think everybody should read this book. This is a book, if it if read deeper, this is a book actually about, Joe was thinking about this, about the Albanian version of David and Goliath. The Goliath who took different forms and became a darling of Washington continued to spew lie after lie about Albanians and in the process became super confident in his final version that was Slobodan Milosevic. But then something miraculous happened. The group of Albanians founded David, Jody Aguardi, and together created the AACL. The Serbian Goliath was shocked on his two weapons of propaganda and lies did not match the mighty weapons that our David possessed, which were the truth on one hand and the powerful voice on the other. Uh, that, that reduced the loud voice of the monster to a whisper. Finally, the, that, that version of the Goliath died a lonely death in the hay, complaining that Jody Guard the League were responsible for his demise. In essence, this book should be about love, is about loving at its finest. Uh, we read about many congressional resolutions, speeches on the floor of Congress by great men such as Senators Dolan Pell, Congressman Lantos, Gilman Hyde, and our own Joe. We read letters to the State Department officials exposing the brutal occupation of Kosovo. This book, book also documents many congressional hearings initiated by the League, many demonstrations against the inhumane treatment of Albanians in Kosovo, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Presheva Valley. It also documents the great uh, dinners organized by the League in which prominent uh, guests who support the Albanian cause that included senators, congressmen, and other dignitaries who in their speeches denounced the occupation and pledged to work hard to end it. Most politicians, politicians in Washington evolved from total ignorance about Albanians to knowledge, deep knowledge about our history and, uh, and the constitution of Albanian people in, into gigs and toss. This is phenomenal. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, this is a wonderful book, mainly because it contains documents of historical importance that will hopefully be read by generations of Albanians with pride and marvel. I hope this book is read by all Albanians, but especially by elected officials in Albania, Kosovo, Macedonia, Montenegro, and Pesheva Valley, and realize that lobbying is the most effective way to realize the national cause. If they already know this and choose another group to lobby for them, so fine with me, I would suggest this to them. Joe Duke's voice, now aided by Shirley's, is still the most powerful one. Finally, so I like the book, don't just like uh, take my word for it, because I am confident that after reading it, you will come to the same conclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Many of you people know him. He's been a member of the board and the executive board of the Albanian American Civic League and Foundation for, I think, 30 years. 30 what, to be exact. Okay. And as many of you know, and I'm going to read this exactly, he was deputy director for North America in charge of tourism for Kosovo and the former Yugoslavia. But when the former Yugoslavia collapsed, he had to immediately return with his family to Kosovo. But then once he was in Kosovo and Serbia overtook it and the occupation began, he fled with his family from his home in Dejan, came back to the United States and built the very important Kosovo, uh, Kosovo Tours International. I think you're all aware of it. 
the leading travel agency serving the Albanian American community and non-Albanian professionals involved in Western Europe and the Western Balkan. With that, welcome. Uh, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests. I want to mention especially our historian, great historian Yusuf Bujoli, who is with us. The ambassador of, the ambassador of Albania, Mr. Ferit Hodja, Mr. Kim Kupai, our ambassador in New York, and our new ambassador in Yerdugoli. We wish him great uh, success. We need you guys. Today, we are celebrating the historical work of former American congressman, our branch origin, of our branch origin, Joseph J. D. Ugardi, and the Albanian American Civic League during the years 1985-93, prepared by the member of Executive Board of Albanian American Civic League, Dr. Faton Bislimi. Thank you, Faton. Thank you again. In a book, in a book titled, Wealth for Albanian Freedom and the Fall of Yugoslavia. I would like to emphasize the well-established truth, also documented in the book of written by Faton, that Joseph J. Dioguardi is a historical figure of the Albanian nation. <laughs> Great national leaders and historical figure, figures are born at a certain time and created in certain historical circumstances and crucial moments of a nation. They are unique with leadership skills, bravery, and accomplishments. Due to our nation's turbulent but glorious history, our people have many such sons and daughters. Among them are those that changed the course of our history forever, such as George Kanstriotis Skanderbeu, Ismail Cemoli, Ibrahim Rugova, Adem Yashori, and Joseph J. Dioguar. Thank you. is without any doubt a living legend of the Albanian nation. Following the path of Fancinoli and Faikonica, he is the father of organized, modern, very successful Albanian-American lobbying, lobbying activity in Washington and beyond. Joe's role, for role, forced first four years as a congressman, then as the president of Albanian American Civic League, joined in 1994 by Shote Ganitsa, Shirley Clois Dioguardi, and supported, supported by the board of Albanian American Civic League and many, many thousands of uh, Albanians in the United States. They were, uh, the work was, their work was extremely important in achieving Kosovo's freedom and independence. Even though Kosovo was by far the biggest challenge and the most important issue, Joe, Shirley and the League have been standing up for the human and national rights of the whole Albanian nation. Almost every single U.S. Senator and Congressman since 1985 who helped our nation, national cause was initially engaged by Joe and the League. There are other countless activities which will be documented in many other books. I would like to mention only a few. Meeting of President Rugova, legendary President Rugova, and Bill President Clinton, support for KLA and legendary com commander Adem Yashari and other commanders, and removal from the US ter terrorist list of the KLA, and as well as impressive demonstrations that we had in New York and Washington, all of you remember, thousands of Albanians showed up with these events. The people of Kosovo fought for their freedom from Serbian occupation for more than a century. In the last 30 years, there were three decisive factors that brought about the freedom and the independence, the peaceful resistance by democratic movement, led by Dr. Ibrahim Rugova, the armed resistance by Kosovo Liberation Army, led by Ademir Atari, and other heroes, and the lobbying activity in Washington, led by Joe Diogwardi. American help and NATO plumbing of Serbia came as a result and combination of these three factors. The history of Kosovo's independence will be incomplete unless uh, a monument to Joe and Shirley uh, until that monument is built in Pristina. Everybody else got monuments. These people, people who, who changed the course of history in the United States for the Albanian nations, they deserve a monument in Pristina and in Kirana and everywhere where Albanian people live. 
they would not accept any recognition by corrupt sellout politicians. It is widely expected, it is widely expect, expect, widely expected that President Osmani and our Prime Minister Kurti will do it. Or this will be done some, sometimes later by somebody else, but there will be a shame on them if they don't do it. The League's professional, independent, powerful work in Washington will continue regardless until the final defeat of criminal Serbia. Yes. For me and millions of Albanian Americans all over the world, Joe and Shirley are extraordinary personalities and heroes. It has been an honor to know them and work closely with them on behalf of Albanian exceptional, Albanian exceptional nation. I say it two times, I will say it ten times for people who are ashamed to be Albanians. Albanian nation is exceptional, like American nation is exceptional. It has been an honor to know them and work closely with them on behalf of, okay, on behalf of our exceptional nation. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Shirley. Thank you. And thank you, Albanian American Civic League and Albanian Americans who helped our cause. May God bless American and Albanian nations. Thank you so much. The person that you are going to next hear, we are welcoming, and that is Ambassador Ferret Hoxha. And I think you know he's the, the new permanent representative of Albania in the United Nations, but as many of you, I think many of you will recall, he first served in this role from 2009 to 2015. Am I correct? I think. And as you'll also recall, he held the first major event. He designed it. He was in charge of it with B'nai B'rith International at the UN on Holocaust Remembrance Day about the unique role that Albanians played, Albanians in Albania and Kosovo, in saving every Jew who either was in Albania or made it to Albania during the Holocaust. No one else had ever accomplished what he accomplished there before to bring it to the awareness of the United States. Wonderful. So the very, very fortunate that he's returned as Albania's ambassador to the U.S. and at a time when also Albania is a member of the U.N. Security Council for the first time. Isn't that wonderful? So, please welcome our very good friend, Ambassador Barrett. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador you want to try and continue? Good afternoon to everyone. I have a statement. I will not read it. I will just say four things. The first one is how pleased I am to be part of this gathering to honor these two fantastic, wonderful, exceptional, as you are qualified, persons. It is a lifetime engagement by Joe and Shirley for the rights for the dignity of Albanians everywhere in Kosovo, in North Macedonia, Macedonia at that time, North Macedonia today, in Preševo Valley, in Montenegro, and of course for the well-being, development, prosperity in Albania. So we are, we have been lucky and blessed, and he has it on his name actually, God has protected you, Dio Guardi. <laughs> so we have been blessed to have such supporters who did not spare an effort their time, their energy, their skills to go where power is. We ambassadors do a fantastic job, but it's not enough. And those two colleagues can testify. We need people who go where power is to have that credible information, to give that information, that first-hand information to those who decide. And without that, we would not have been in Kosovo or in Albania where we are. That was my first point. My second point is that your work not only is recognized by us, but reality has shown what has happened. So your efforts are not in vain. And Albanians everywhere, but I can speak about Albanians in Albania, will never ever forget. Your work, activity, contribution, impact has to be recognized, will be recognized duly in Kosovo, I hope, but I can assure you in, in Albania. Thank you. The third I would like to say just, um, of course, there are many problems. 
and the international recognition of Kosovo is not complete. It will come because that's the only way. It's just one straight avenue. It's not easy. It has become complicated, but I was very happy to hear Senator Menendez committing because it's complicated in Europe, but it can be sped up by the US. So if you continue your work, which I think you will continue, this is priority number one. The US needs to, be, to get engaged seriously to push Europeans and to get over with that issue with Serbia. Yes. Kosovo. <laughs> Kosovo is an independent state. It has nothing to do with Serbia unless Kosovo decides to have relations, dealings in everything that states do with each other. We have to come there because without that, the dossier of the Western Balkan Six will not be completed. My last point is Albania's Security Council. I'm privileged and honored, and this is the, the honor of my life and my team, that for the first time Albania is serving where decisions are made, where the important issues are dealt with. And if I'm losing a little bit of voice today, I will be missing it tomorrow at the, at the special meeting that uh, we will have and the clash we'll have with Russia on Ukraine. Tomorrow at 10 o'clock, there will be a meeting in the Security Council to expose Russia and to try to have Russia say that publicly that it will not attack. We don't know what's happening. They are preparing. But we will expose Russia tomorrow to say that Russia respects the territorial integrity and sovereignty of another state, and Albania will be very vocal on that together with the United States. Thank you. The Security Council, the Security Council has added for Albania not only a spotlight, not only responsibility, but it has added a layer, an important layer that we have not had in our fantastic, exceptional relations with the United States. I sit every day close to a member of the Biden's cabinet, Ambassador Linda thomas Greenfield, and I talk with her every day on various issues. So whenever I need to tell her something, I have her close to me every day, and I'm speaking about this engagement of the United States for Kosovo because it's extremely important. Wonderful. Senator Menendez said that it was difficult, but they will have to do uh, a little bit more. And I'm concluding by saying that every time you went to testify, every time you, like this one, gathered people, there have been so many, so many occasions. Please accept one wholehearted thank and gratitude for every second that you spent for us. Thank you. Let's give this wonderful diplomat, Albanian diplomat, a big hand for what he's going to do. Now you see how fortunate we are. I forgot to add one thing. The Senate, uh, the senator mentioned that it would be the subcommittee on Europe that will be holding a hearing. Okay, senator the first, Shaheen. the first one yeah, is yeah. going to actually happen at 10 in the morning on February 16th. I don't have my uh, calendar in front of me. I think it's a Wednesday. When we get that message uh, intact, you'll be able to hook up online and, and listen to it. And now uh, Joe is going to introduce the creator of the book. Well, let me give you a, a great story because, you know, many people have been exposed to the greatness of history when it comes to Albanian history. Now, you see the statue of George Castriati, is it still here? I put it as you walked in to see it. What happened to George Castriati? Don't bury him, please. Right there, okay. Very important that you know that 550 years ago, there was a great general that was a hostage, well, he was taken as a hostage by the Sultan. At that time, I guess it was uh, Morad. Was it Morad? I think it was. And then later it came Mehmet. But this man realized that he was really Albanian. And in a way, this is my story. Because I was raised in an Italian-American neighborhood where I had to distinguish myself. My mother was from Bari, she's Italian. And then my father, comes from Italy, but he comes from one of the most famous 
Albanian-speaking villages, Kutundi Greci. Now, why is that the case? And it's in the book. Because it's the only village that history shows Skanderbeg actually put his feet in because when he left, it wasn't, everybody likes to call it Calabria, but it was really Campania, which is just north of Calabria. It's just wonderful to have Bats out here because he found us, believe it or not. He was part of the uh, refugee camp in Macedonia. His parents were there. Uh, they escaped. And they, Fatan then found his way to Texas where he became a student. And then he calls me one day, 2002, to say, Joe, i reading all this stuff about your league. And now in Europe, for the youth of Europe, they have a forum in Prague. And I would like to represent the Albanian youth. I said, well, who are you? And he explained where he was, how he got there, whatnot. I says, listen, I'm a certified public accountant. If you give me a budget and you explain why this is important for the Albanian people, for you to address the youth of Europe, and by the way, he has his background in math and in computers, he, he prepared a wonderful uh, presentation, I guess it was uh, with a, power, a PowerPoint, and the um, unbelievable thing is that we almost didn't do it. I had to raise the money. We don't sit on money in the Civic League. I have to call people. He wanted 1800 bucks. We raised it for him and included the airfare, the hotel. He goes to Prague. Long story short, he gets number one out of 50, Albanian, 50 students that are scholars. He is scored, not by Albanians, but by the European uh, professors as number one. Calls me back again the following year. Says, Joe, now it's in Brussels. And now it seems to be even more important because I'm reading what you and Shirley did to come up with this resolution with Tom Lantos and Henry Hyde, and I'd like to go there, and I'd like to present. And I said, if you tell me that you can make a presentation with that resolution, H.R. 24, for the future of Albania as an independent state, because don't forget, this is 2002. It didn't become an independent even in words until 2008. So he did that. And again, he scores number one. The only Albanian there from youth, he scores number one. So with that, I want to introduce you to our number one scholar, Batam Baslimi, who left there, who went, who went to get his master's degree in Harvard, and we were pleased to help him do that. But it's really his work that did it. And then he became Dr. Baslimi from Alberta University, is it? Yep. In Edmonton. And you don't know what it, he went through to be here today, how many planes he had to switch, and he gets here just in time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So thank you, everybody, for being here. I don't think I need a mic. You can all hear me. I am going to spare you from a boring PowerPoint presentation and a long speech, but about, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about why we're here today and that's a book. And it's not, it's barely my book. It's the book that talks about what has been done just in the beginnings. It's only part one of a long history of what has happened with the Albanian American Civic League, with Joe Shirley, and all of you that have supported them in this huge, important journey for the Albanian nation. Uh, all of you have a copy of it, so I'm going to point to some pages. I'm going to try to be as prompt and as short as possible to give you the bulk of it, to give you the gist of it, to give you what the key points are and why it is so important. Uh, before I do that, I just want to really thank at the bottom of my heart, Joe and Shirley, for the wonderful uh, opportunity to be with, with here, uh, here with all of you today for the amazing work they have done uh, in over three decades to support the Albanian national cause, and most importantly, to support Kosovo. Uh, I want to thank every uh, member of the board of directors who have uh, spared nothing uh, to support and continue this mission. Uh, they came today from across the United States, some drove, some flew, some couldn't just make it because flights were canceled. The uh, nor'eastern that hit yesterday was a major issue. I barely made it myself here. Uh, uh, we have some special guests here with us today. Uh, uh, Professor Yusuf Bujovi from Kosovo, a historian, somebody who has done a wonderful job in telling the world the true, 
the true history of the country. I want to also thank a very special person who's not here today, couldn't make it, Haki Dervishi, another board member who has supported this book and who has supported the work that I did for over two and a half years in documenting what we see here today. We have distinguished guests today. We all are distinguished by the virtue of being here, let me say that. But I want to recognize Ambassador Hoja, who in my opinion is one of the most uh, important diplomats we have in the Albanian world today. Uh, we have missed him in New York for a while. He was here before, had a, a different assignment for a while. He's returned. And he returns at a crucial time in, in, in the history of Albanian diplomacy to serve Albania and the Albanian nation as a, represent, as a representative in the Security Council for the, for the first time in history of the Albanian state. Uh, another equally important diplomat that just started in Washington, Ambassador Ilir Dogoli from uh, Kosovo. He's just uh, been here a few weeks, maybe a few months, I'm not sure. Uh, he has uh, served the Republic of Kosovo in pre previous diplomatic assignments as ambassador in uh, Brussels, if I'm not wrong, in Turkey after that, and now ends up in Washington. Uh, and his colleague from New York, uh, ambassador from Zimbi Sufa, who leads our mission in New York on behalf of the Republic of Kosovo. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being here. He has been a supporter of books uh, by Bujovi and together with Rami Stafila of Houston, they have made sure that we tell the story. Most importantly though, I did this book and I'm here today because, not because of us, but because of those who come after us. And I want to recognize my daughter, Fiona, can you just sit, stand up for a minute? She's just a uh, teenager, she's turned 13, but I brought her with me so that this generation of young people understands how we came to be where we are today, and then they hopefully take on the torch as we pass on. And nobody's going to live forever, so we got to make sure that we document as much as we can so that those who come after us know what has happened. With that, I'm going to start with my little presentation. Again, I'm going to spare you from a PowerPoint, although we kind of set up for that, but I'm, I, I want it to be more interactive, and I want you, you guys all have a copy of the book. So here is the key points that I say that have really kind of gotten me to think, although I've been with Joe and Shirley and Civic League exactly two, two decades now, but as I was looking at the materials that I got from Joe and Shirley and the archives, congressional documents, resolutions, letters, all of that, some of which are published here for the first time, I kind of relived that entire history. I was not part of any of this uh, uh, in, in the 80s and 90s, I was just a little kid. So for me, it was enriching in many ways. Beyond enriching, it was inspiration. And this is, as I said, just the beginning. It all starts in 1984, when Joe gets elected to Congress against all odds. Nobody expected him to win. He did win. His win was not only for his political ambitions and his own political agenda. I think his win was way more important for the Albanian nation. Things would have not happened the way they have happened without that win of that election in 1984. Thank you. Uh, beyond that, a lot of people would, you know, kind of ask the question, well, how did it happen that he then became so involved with the Albanian issues? Well, Joe talked about that and everybody else who spoke before me talked about that, so I'm not going to repeat any of that. We know the story how he got involved. But if you turn to page 39 of the book, you have the first ever congressional resolution that was introduced in the United States Congress on June uh, 17, 1986. It was signed by only one member of Congress in the House of Representatives, Jody Aguardi, and his friend in the U.S. Senate, Senator and former presidential candidate, Bob Dole, who recently passed away. A lot of people talk about history, but a lot of people have not shown you the facts. On page 45, you had a letter signed by Dole addressed to Joe, thanking him for the introduction that he made to Dole and the bringing of Dole into the Albanian world and the Albanian issues. <laughs> key point, number one, I, 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 there's three key points I want to make and I'll be done with this. So number one, 1986, first ever resolution. Just about a year later, exactly July 15, 1987, you have the resolution on page 67 of the book. It took a year for Joe to garner the support of not 
another five members, not another two members, not another 10 members, not another 20 members, not another 40 members, not another 50 members. 58 members of Congress signed on to that resolution. Now I have all the names documented here. Just a year after the first resolution, Joe manages to get 58 members of Congress to sign on a resolution condemning Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia was a big shot at that time. Kosovo was nowhere to be found, not even on the maps. The first movement legally as a, as, 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 as a national movement for democracy and, and, and freedom and independence in Kosovo started with LDK in 1989, way after all of this was happening. So 58 members of Congress signed their resolution a year later. This is crucial because this is when we broke the ice. This is crucial because that, this is when the world started to understand through the American Congress that there is some people that are freedom loving that are on their historical and ancestral lands and that are being butchered left and right by the regime of Milosevic at that time. On page 85, and if you have the book, you can just follow along because this is very important for you to just get the bulk of it, is the document, the, the United uh, States Department of State document is reproduced. I didn't write it. I copied the actual document, placed it on the book. Well, here's what the document, among other things, says. This says that what Joe was doing, pretty much, and the resolutions he was introducing in Congress, were not seen in any way, shape, or form with a favor favorable eye by the American administration. In the 1980s, late 1980s, America wanted peace at all costs in that region. It was not ready to go to war or do anything about Albanians. Anyone, but much less Albanians. Indeed, I quote that document you have it on page 87. It says that what Joe was doing, pretty much, was needlessly damaging the relationship that the United States had with Yugoslavia. Needlessly damaging. Well, that is not damaging. That was rationally, reasonably, and bravely damaging the reputation of what then became known a few years later as the new Hitler of Europe, Milosevic, who caused deaths and millions of people with the worst in Yugoslavia, Bosnia, and, and, uh, and Kosovo. These resolutions were key because in November 1987, we managed to have the first ever hearing in the Human Rights Caucus of the United States Congress. 1987, for the young people I see here, they were probably not even born. I was only three years old at that time. So when the United States Congress was speaking about my rights, I had no idea about anything in the world. I was only three years old. This was the first time that officially we were talking about what was going on in Kosovo at that time. That brings me to the point number two, which is absolutely absolutely in my mind significant and important and you have that in page 109 in page 109 you have a letter by president george h w bush the late president now george h w bush written and signed by him addressed to jody aguardi in which he talks last paragraph if you read it it says, we're not going to stop at anything to make sure that the Albanian people in Kosovo get their human, political, and civil rights. Now, for those of you who have studied political science, for those of you who have studied history, you have come across the famous expression of what's known as the Christmas warning. Well, that became, a couple of years later, an important, an important statement because it was the Christmas warning that, that sent a message to Belgrade from Washington, the God prohibit you go at a full war uh, attack on Kosovo, the United States will respond. I ask any scholar, any uh, student of political science, to find yet another document that shows and documents the roots of the Christmas morning as they are documented in this letter 
from September 27, 1988. It is, that's the roots of the Christmas morning. That's because of Joe's personal, at that time, friendship with Bush, uh, President Bush's wife, who came from the same uh, area that Joe came, uh, that lived in, in uh, Rye, New York, yep. if I'm not mistaken, Barbara Bush. Barbara Bush even uh, campaigned with me. You have pictures and handwritten notes by President Bush to Joe that I included as sample. You know, the book only contains 5% of the material in this time period. If I included everything, the book would have, would have had to be five pounds. We could not have carried it. This is the second most important point because now what's happening? Remember the State Department being against only people in Congress wanting to support us? Things are starting to change. Now we have somebody in the White House who's concerned. And that happened because of, of, of the work that Joe did at, 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 at that time. I'll move on to the next major point. Page 125. I have included the minutes, the original minutes of the meeting, on the founding of the Albanian American Civic League. Even the Civic League comes after what Joe had started to do for the Albanian people and the Albanian nation in the United States Congress. Only six days later, this happened April 1, 1990, Joe was uh, talking to the editorial board of the New York Times. And just a few pages later, you have the article that came in the New York Times, dated April 6, 1990, that talks about the Albanians in Kosovo and Yugoslavia at that time. Uh, the bullying in the Balkans, it's, it's titled Bullying in the Balkans. And then Joe's letter to the editor about that. On that, on that day. I'll move on to the third most important and crucial, I would say, moment that for me is on this book. And you'll see that in page 204. A letter to Joe by then Senator Joe Biden, now President of the United States of America, dated February 8, 1991. He was then chair of the Subcommittee on European Affairs and the Committee of Foreign Affairs of the United States Senate. In that letter, Biden is inviting Joe to testify in the first hearing that that com committee was holding on Kosovo. It is then, and the video of that hearing is on our YouTube channel at the AACL, that Biden was educated on the history and the importance of Albanians in the Balkans and what the Albanians actually needed at that time. Uh, then I go on to talk about the work that was amazing that Joe and the Albanian American Civic League did between 1990 and 1993 to not only address the United States Congress and the administration here, but to bring attention to the Albanian issues in Kosovo throughout Europe. You have led us in the book, pages 217 to 222, of important congressional leaders like Bob Dole, uh, Senator Powell, and others who were chairs of committees on foreign affairs, whether in the U.S. House of Representatives or in the Senate, and they were writing letters to Lord Carrington, to the prime ministers of foreign ministers of important uh, countries in Europe, Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, France, you name it, and asking them to put pressure on Serbia about the Albanians in Kosovo. Yes, we all know what has happened after that, but I ended with the book in 1993 for a very good reason. As is written in the epilogue that Shirley Cloyce de Aguardi, uh produced and wrote, 1994, she joined the Civic League. A few years later, uh, she uh, married Joe. But ever since she joined the Civic League, I think a lot of the work and the success that happened after 1994 is connected to, was, uh, is uh, uh, a result of the work that Shirley did with Joe together and the rest of the support. So Shirley, we would not be here without what you have done. Uh, and this is, as I said, just the first. And the second book, which is gonna cover the period 94, 2008, you will see a lot of the work that Shirley had done. 
without which we would not be where we are today. And, and that was stated by Senator Menendez himself. Now, what was interesting about his speech, and I'm going to conclude there, is that we have the most powerful men in the United States Senate, the guy who uh, uh, chairs the Foreign Affairs Committee, taking time to come to us today en route to the White House with, uh, 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 to meet with President Biden today on important global issues such as that of Ukraine. You know, just the fact that we had a man in this room talking about us, talking about our issues and our, our mission, and moving from here, to, going from here to D.C., to be with the president of the most powerful country on the face of the earth, to talk about other things is on its own historic. We would have never been able to get Kosovo free and independent without such work without Joe and Shirley in the Civic League and people who supported them in the Civic League. Getting to know and getting the support of these key congressional leaders. We have to do that today. This is not just history. This is who we are. This is the story that gave birth to a new country called Kosovo. This is a story that help the Albanians in Macedonia get the University of Tatova. Joe and Shirley were right there with the Albanians in Macedonia to push for that. This is a story that tells the history of the first ever congressional delegation visiting the Albanian lands in Montenegro. This is a story that talks about, and Senator Menendez mentioned that, the plight of the Albanians in the Prusheva Valley. Yes. The most you know, in my mind, the most uh, uh, the most uh, uh, important piece of the puzzle of the Albanian national cause. Now, who talks about Prasheva Valley? Almost no one. You have the number one person in the U.S. Senate talking about it. Why? Because he's been educated on it. He's been told about it. We have gotten his support on it. So this is who we are, not the book, the history contained in it. And I have very little to do with it in terms of if you take all of my, my writing about uh, this book, you could probably condense it into maybe 30 pages out of the 300 pages. The rest of it is documents and documents and documents. Because only by telling the truth based on facts, we can build the true actual story of our history. The rest is just cheap talk. With that, again, Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. I have had the honor of my life to work with these two people who I consider family, to work with these two people and the board. Again, I see Zikri, uh, Hafiz, uh, Hafiz uh, I don't, I don't, you know, Valdita. Everyone stand up. Everybody who's on the board and who supported us, uh, the guy, uh, uh, Nazim, uh, uh, Yanuzi from Atlantic City, Saab Gosh, and you know, everybody. Barash, I see you there. Without any further ado, from the bottom of my heart, find data true. Thank you. Zot Yubekov Yube, Familia de Yube. Thank you for coming, all of you. Surely you got Thank you. Thank you to Fatim Bislimi. I think he really was one of the major presentation that we received. Television in Egypt, Al TV, USA, Ga New Jersey, Behir, Sina.